Hello, National University Academy um, Economic students. This is Mr. Goyette. Um, coming to you uh, for Unit 3 uh, to go over what you can expect to see or prepare yourself for for the exam coming up here this Friday. Um, the latest that you'll need to have that in uh, is Monday. So you have uh, Friday and Monday to complete it. It is an online exam. Um, you'll have one chance to take it, so do the best you can. There is a one written um, short answer section at the end. The topics or the key terms you'll need to um, review from chapters 5 and 6 that we went over in the chat earlier this week are, and let me move the camera for a moment. <coughs> uh, let's see if you can see that well. Move that over here. Okay, we have... Um, Prices, negative externality, positive externality, surplus, shortage, rent control, differentiation, oligopoly, collusion, neutral monopoly, trusts, antitrust legislation, rationing, and price floor are some of the key terms you'll need to um, uh, review and pay special attention to. Okay, let's continue the lecture with a review. Uh, now, what I'm going to do for, instead of having you go through every one of these in detail, I'm going to reference, or have you reference the uh, uh, earlier chat that we had um, in the week uh, via Class Live, where we went over negative externality, positive externality. Now, I'll go over some of the topics here, but for a broader review, uh, use the worksheets that we did earlier in the week, and the discussion and activities we did online together in our class live session. Uh, let's go forward with um, prices. Now remember prices are a form of communication in economics that is uh, tells you what you need to save up to of course purchase this. So what is the main form of communication between producers and consumers in a free market? It's prices and of course prices are used um, as a way uh, between companies too as they're um, competing with one another to um, go out and set prices in the marketplace so people can uh, understand what the value of something is. Um, pollution is, example, is an example of negative, ex uh, negative externality. In other words, um, you might want to have the steel mill in your, um, in, uh, the steel mill in your community because it will create jobs, it will of course create the steel and um, it will allow you to um, uh, be, have a productive um, factory in your community. The, the only negative being that you're going to have to deal with some of the pollution issues there. So that's called a negative externality. It's an externality because it's not something that the um, company is intending to create, but it's a, by, it's a byproduct of its, um, its actual production. Uh, it can't help but have some pollutants. Um, a positive externality, uh, the one they use in the textbook was the fact that if one neighbor put up a sign for a neighborhood watch or put up a sign for there's alarms here or a security guard goes through here, well that would, those houses next to and in and around that one house that has the security system and the security guard would benefit from the positive externality so a criminal wouldn't necessarily break into the house next door because they'd have similar uh, security oversight. Uh, when the quantity supplied is greater than the quantity demanded at a particular price, a surplus exists. When a quantity supplied is greater when the, than the quantity demanded at a particular price, a surplus exists. So um, if you have, if, if, if a company, or excuse me, if Fry's orders, um, you know, a thousand copies of um, a certain TV or a DVD player or, um, or video game component and uh, they stock it on the shelves and they uh, end up um, selling what some of their stock but they have a, an extra well, four or five pallets in the back storage room and they're just not moving. They have a surplus of that unit. Um, when the quantity demand is greater than the quantity supplied at a given price, a shortage exists. Remember, shortages, we talked about scarcity in Chapter 1. 
um, of its scarcity with regard to resources, the shortage of a um, uh, when a quantity of demand is greater than the quantity supplied at a given price, that's, that's a shortage. Governments sometimes set prices to protect producers and consumers from dramatic price swings. Uh, which of the following is an example of price a price ceiling? Uh, rent control. Um, rent control is used in certain areas to when uh, there is a socio-economically disadvantaged group um, that uh, is going to be forced out of a whole area because of the, the rising costs in a, a region and, and the city or state decides to rent control that region to keep those people in those apartments and not allow the landlords to raise those rents. That's called rent control. That's a example of price, a price ceiling. Under a perfect competition, products must be identical. In a perfect, perfectly competitive market, prices are set by the forces of supply and demand alone. They are not manipulated by the government. Um, set th to set their products apart from those Competitors, sellers in a monopolistic market use differentiation. So you can see, um, uh, let's for, say, for example, uh, Apple and, and uh, PCs uh, vying uh, for market share, going back and forth and saying why they're, they're um, different. Product differentiation rises or raises price by increasing demand. Uh, a competitive market is characterized by fewer products less choice and higher prices. Which of the following is a market structure dominated by a few large sellers? Um, a few large sellers the is an oligopoly. So uh, ola means of the few. Gopoly, of course, uh, uh, um, polis is the root word for city. Um, so that's your city or place. And ole means few. Um, in the breakfast cereal market, three companies account for 80% of the sales. Why then are there so many brands of cereal? Companies differentiate, differentiate their products. C companies engage in non-price competition. And companies induce consumer loyalty in certain brand names. Uh, when sellers secretly agree to set production levels or prices, it is called collusion. Um, and what kind of monopoly tends to develop because of economies um, because of economies of sale, a natural monopoly. Let me go over that one. What kind of monopoly tends to develop because um, economies of scale, and that's a, a natural monopoly. Antitrust legislation was enacted in the 1800s to monitor and regulate big business, uh, prevent and dismantle monopolies, and restrict laissez-faire. Two presidents that were known for this were President Roosevelt and um, William Howard Taft. They broke up the big railroad and meatpacking monopolies. system in which government and other institutions decides how to distribute goods and services is called rationing. Uh, minimum wage is an example of a price floor. Minimum wage is an example of a price floor. Go over the definition for price floor. Um, ticket scalpers are an example of a black market. Um, and your prompt, because we have very little time here, would you expect monopolies to develop as a result of competition or lack of competition? Explain. So hit the books, and good luck on your test, and I will see you on Tuesday in class, or actually on Monday in class. Bye now.